Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, November 9th, 2020. And today we're going to be taking a look at where President Trump uh, and his campaign with the GOP are going to be filing lawsuits against uh, the potential counts in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia. So, so far we've seen President Trump pretty much call for either a recount in certain parts uh, of this country or suing states entirely, suing uh, county officials, actually. Um, I forgot to uh, characterize one of those states there. Uh, this is this is weird. I mean, this is really never really seen in an election. The last time we saw uh, a candidate this far out, this drawn out, denying the election results was in 2000. And that was due uh, to the issues in Florida, which was ultimately decided by the Supreme Court. And that's where I think President Trump is aiming to go with this. Uh, as you can see, with these lawsuits and where President Trump is going to pay for a recount, because in some of these states it is outside the recount territory, which means his campaign will have to uh, foot the bill, we see 79 electoral votes in states that have either already said that, you know, we are 99.99% done counting, which gives the Associated Press and numerous other news sources uh, the opportunity to call a race. And I understand that, you know, the media does not get to certify votes. They project an, a winner. But in 2016, I would do want to point out that Donald Trump gave a victory speech before he was even declared the winner from major media sources. Number one. Number two, I also wanted to point out that the results were still not certified for weeks. There was, a risk, there was a recount in both Wisconsin and Michigan, actually in all three, and Pennsylvania, ran by the Green Party, not Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton conceded the morning after the election. So, again, you know, Donald Trump was elected, sure, projected the elected winner that night, but he was not officially certified until uh, the electors voted. So, um, I really think that it is a hypocritical. I don't think that is, you know, I, I do call out both parties for things but president trump did not speak after number one being declared the vi the victor uh, mid-speech he was declared the winner of the state of pennsylvania which put him over the top uh, but on top of that you know a lot of what we saw in 2016 there still were recounts and they weren't ran by the democratic party they were ran by the green party jill stein wanted a recount in those three states specifically um raised millions of dollars to do so um so all in all i mean we are going to see recounts occur this time but honestly trump is doing right now everything in order to avoid an election loss there are people on the republican party including notable senators such as lindsey graham saying that this election was rigged saying that there were irregularities when they haven't provided substantial proof of it you know just because you point out that there was a sudden jump in terms of the numbers i really don't think you should be using that as evidence just because the ballots that came in typically split 80 to 20 for Biden, especially in areas like Milwaukee and Detroit and Philadelphia. Um, and when you think about what that actually does for President Trump, this sort of removes credibility. If there isn't any proven voter fraud, this is going to negatively reflect. If you support President Trump, this is going to negatively reflect on President Trump. If there is no proof provided, you know, we've seen the courts strike down his, uh, his cases because he has failed to provide notable evidence. And what we see across this country is, yes, if Donald Trump is to get his way in all of these states, and let's say they don't count the mail-in vote. President Trump led in all of these states except for one when the non-mail-in vote was counted. Nevada was the only state where the election day vote actually favored Joe Biden. Donald Trump would win the election. It would actually be the exact same map uh, as 2016 with the exception of one electoral vote. So there's a reason why Donald Trump does want to go to court for this he could win the election if they were all to ru rule in his favor but what we've seen now is that um you know he is now suing the state of arizona in arizona he's uh, suing county officials um election officials he does the same thing in nevada right now um clark county officials specifically but um as of i believe just a few days ago they updated this on the 6th so this is three days ago uh, judges in Georgia, Michigan, and Pennsylvania have all tossed Donald Trump's cases. Now, that's not to say this is the end of it. It absolutely is not. That is just the first line of defense, and there are plenty uh, other barriers, or I guess you could say easier pathways for President Trump to get what he wants done. But at the end of the day, the media has projected Joe Biden the winner. The states are almost done counting, and once all of the ballots are counted, Joe Biden will be the winner of the election. The issue is not... Um, that, you know, these ballots, I mean, yes, it is on, on the Trump side. They are saying that these incoming ballots are fraudulent. But 
I do want to say that their issue is not that, you know, these ballots, um, when they say stop the count and then continue the count, depending on where they are in the country, they're not asking that these ballots are to not be counted. I think they're they're waiting for them to be counted, and then they're going to say they should be invalid, that these ballots were cast unconstitutionally. Essentially, uh, there's a whole issue of that because they would be working in a scenario where the statewide officials were allowed to draw their own laws, and he's going to the Supreme Court to strike down in a nationwide precedent that certain tactics cannot be utilized. So, for example, I think that the Trump campaign is going to try to use possibly uh, drive-in voting, which was very widespread amongst uh, traditionally Democratic areas just because of how densely populated they are. Uh, I think that he is going to try to say, you know, that should not be allowed. That should be those votes should be invalidated. And if they are, because we've seen certain states have different piles for different types of votes, it's very well the possibility that Donald Trump does win the election that way. But that is a very big if. And we've already seen essentially those justices um, in Michigan. Let me go ahead and pull up the article here. Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. So taking those out of the equation, let's just say, you know, he does push forward, which he will. He will be pushing for a recount. He will get one in Georgia. Absolutely. Uh, we don't know about Michigan and Pennsylvania. He would have to foot the bill just because both of those states are outside the statewide mandatory um, recount area. But let's say, you know, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia are removed from Trump. Well, even if he does somehow flip Wisconsin through a recount, which has never happened in American history, we've never seen a recount overturn uh, a nationwide election or really any super, super close election with the exception of a few Senate races, I believe, way back when. And most recently, I think we saw uh, one of the narrowest Senate races in Minnesota in 2008. But other than that, we don't really see the idea of a recount even considering the possibility of overturning a Senate race or uh, really a presidential race. In 2016, the recount actually added 133 votes to Donald Trump. So I think he's counting on that. But the problem is Joe Biden's win in Wisconsin is not 133. He's leading in that state by 20,000 votes, 20,000 votes in neighboring Michigan. We see an even larger margin of victory for Joe Biden, uh, nearly 150,000 a 150,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. And in Pennsylvania, it looks like right now it's 50,000 votes. It could very well expand. They still have some outstanding ballots. So when you're looking at these three states in particular, recounts are not going to change anything on their own. He's going to have to go to the court. And I think at the end of the day, he's going to try to go to the Supreme Court and invalidate certain methods of voting in order to take these out. First of all, what we've seen in Pennsylvania is that ballots can be received up until the 12th. Uh, we've seen that in these voting areas that they have separated the votes that have been uh, brought in after the 12th. And so they're still counting them. They're still going to the state total, but they're being separated. And I think that's just in the event that they need to take those votes that were uh, received after a certain date. That way, if they do end up going to the Supreme Court and they strike against that, they have a very easy way of negating those results out of the overall vote total. But the problem is, the problem is there was a precedent set that each state has their own voting rules. These states said you can cast your ballot this way. You can vote this way. You can get your voice heard in any of these fashions. And that is the problem with Donald Trump going to the court. Because even though the Supreme Court may be lopsided in his favor, six to three, at the end of the day, you can't tell voters who have already voted, no, you couldn't have voted that way, even though it was legal at the time. That is simply unfair and I mean, ironically, unconstitutional. I don't think that President Trump is going to have too much success in the courts because he has failed to provide substantial evidence towards this voter fraud. As much as you'd like to say, Rudy Giuliani saying this is mathematically impossible. It actually isn't number one. And number two, we saw votes come in because they were being counted after the election day vote. I don't think people realize that the state legislatures decided that the mail-in vote was to be counted after the election day vote. So of course, Biden is going to gain numbers after the day, uh, after the early election day vote. Um, I really just don't understand why we are even having this discussion. Joe Biden is the president elect of the United States. And while President Trump will likely try to go into uh, numerous lawsuits, suing different election officials if he doesn't get his way the first time, at the end of the day, the results will likely be the same. Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States of America. And he's already been projected by the Associated Press, which is very nonpartisan, by even Fox News, uh, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, 
and you could say mainstream media, but they have never incorrectly projected a winner since the year 2000. Not once. I mean, we have never seen an incorrect call on a presidential level since the year 2000 because 2000 was when the whole Florida fiasco occurred. So when you're looking at the credibility of these mainstream media sources, yes, they love sensationalism, but they love the ratings and the money that they get from those advertisements a lot more. And don't you think if there actually was any issue of voter fraud, would they have called the election? Ask yourself, are you still watching CNN? Are you still watching Fox News? Are you still watching MSNBC after Biden was declared the winner? I don't blame people for stopping to, you know, stop watching my channel just because you deserve a break from the election cycle. If you're interested in politics still, absolutely. Watch my videos. They're probably fun to watch if you're still interested, but you probably won't be too interested until about, you know, six months from now when we start ramping up 2022. But when you're looking at the election, these media sources also are very telling as to whether or not there actually is voter fraud. Because do you know how many people would tune in if there actually was evidence of voter fraud? Do you know how many people would have all of these various news sources up all at once just to see uh, a deferring opinion on the potential idea of voter fraud? Fox News would not have called this race if they actually thought there was something out. They would not have. This is not some media conspiracy against Donald Trump because they would benefit from a voter fraud situation. Absolutely. Monetary wise, I mean, everything. They would have a lot more time to cover this election. And they drew it along. I mean, the vote count took a long time and they drew it along for six days, really. Uh, five days till we called the presidential election. And this issue of voter fraud would be a very good story for the press. But it just simply is not true. And that is the reason why they're not running it. We have 79 electoral votes out of states where Donald Trump says he wants a recount or he is suing either a statewide official, local county officials, election officials, or the entire state itself in the way that they handle their ballots. He's been shot down in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. You know, they've said, you know, we're not we're not taking this. But we all know the legal system and there are workarounds. It could go further than that. So I'm going to keep those in a close watch. But at the end of the day, we know who won the Rust Belt. We know who won Nevada and Arizona. And while President Trump may be contesting those results, there is nothing indicating that any reasonable court would rule in his favor to negate mail-in ballots, to negate drive-in ballots, whatever it might be. President Trump is out of options, and this is his last route to victory. If he ever was to get there, it would be this way, but realistically, I just don't see it happening. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 post-election videos if you just want to see where the election stood just a few days ago. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.